is that uh, ever a possible? Because uh, you know we know about jobs for pals, we know about uh, cadre deploy deployment that has been taking on for a very very long time. And with the creation of this new uh, Ministry of uh, Electricity, and uh, I see Gwede Mantashi refers to uh, this minister as a project manager, because uh, this is exactly what he's uh, referred to him as. And, you know, what is his role going to be? And we're looking at possibly duplicating or even triplicating the effort. Okay. And uh, there was a time when uh, Cyril Ramaphosa promised to, uh, to, to, to scale down uh, his, uh, uh, the various ministries and the portfolios, but it seems like the elephant is actually getting bigger and bigger. And uh, at the same time, even looking at uh, Praveen Gordon, for instance, uh, is he going to play, be playing a different role? Because we know of the unbundling of ESCOM that has been on the cards for a very, very long time. And how is the president actually going to coordinate these three critical portfolios that is having a disastrous impact on the country? I think, um, you know, it goes back to what I stated earlier. It appears that the president, including his ministers, do not have it in their interest to actually get the country working. They do not, it's not in their interest, for example, to get ESCOM to work, deliver energy, um, to um, provide energy to the people. You'll recall that the president um, has got business interest in the energy sector. Um, we know that is one of his Shanduka companies is also an IPP company. Um, similarly, with his um, 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 brother-in-law Patrice Motsepe, um, Jeff Kadebe, etc. Therefore, in light of that interest, those business interests of his relatives, even himself, even his business associates, it's not um, in his interest to have a functioning ESCOM. Because once ESCOM is able to function optimally and service the needs of the people of our country, there's no need for IPPs. If you look at the destruction of our SOEs from, um, you know, Denel, SAA, the post office. Um, for example, let us look at the issue of the post office. Currently, um, there's going to be a retrenchment of over 6,000 workers. And you check that the time post office was actually working optimally. Um, a lot of people were employed there. Even the Sasa grants were uh, distributed via the post office, and meaning the money that the government is paying now to a private company to distribute the grants, it was paid to a state-owned entity, meaning the money of the government was circulating within the government. In other words, government was not losing money, but you know, um, government was actually using another state-owned entity to fulfill um, its purpose of distributing grants. But this deliberate destruction is actually paving the way for SOEs, sorry, for privatization or for the private sector to enter into the market that is, um, that is um, enjoyed by the government. Now, once that happens, now what that happens is that you are going to have companies that do not exist um, you know, to, to service the needs of South Africans, companies who exist for profit that are going to go there and dominate that space. And when they dominate that space, jobs are going to be lost. Um, you know, we're going to see, um, you know, the destruction um, of our um, SOEs as much as we're seeing now. So we can speculate as much as we want to, but the, 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 the actions of the government it is actually showing that they do not have the interest. In fact, they are having an opposed interest that let these SOEs be destroyed so that their friends in the private sector are able to capture that um, the markets that are um, enjoyed by the by the state. Also, if you are to look at the the question of having a government that is comprised of people from different parties, that would be the most rational thing to do because currently you find that there's a lot of talent in the opposition parties. There's a lot of skills in the opposition parties. Even when you are debating, you observe some of the debates that, yes, one or two minutes are going to use to highlight what the problems are. But we spend more time as opposition parties offering solutions. So even from listening to the solutions, the current executive, from it is it is failing to even listen to a solution from the executive. How much more 
from um, when it comes to taking a member of the executive, uh, sorry, a member of the opposition and putting them in the executive. Because the attitude that they are showing is that we don't care about what we say as an opposition, no matter how um, well thought it is, no matter how, um, um, you know, solution, no matter how it proves to solve our problems. They are only caring about one thing, is that we as the ANC must appear as if we know it all, we've got the solutions to everything, and we do not want to appear as if we don't know what we are doing and we are taking advice from the opposition. That is their attitude, and it is a destructive attitude because opposition parties in their true nature do not exist to just oppose. They call out the executive for wrongdoings, but they offer solutions as well. However, if you are a smart ruling party, you are going to use the ideas from the opposition parties. However, in, in practice, the government does not have the attitude of wanting to work with opposition parties, starting from, um, you know, including them in the cabinet, including them in some of the discussions. Look, for example, some of the meetings that the president has with the leaders of opposition parties. He only comes there to pretend as if is consulting, whereas he's already decided what he's going to do. So he used that platform to actually wrap a stamp his decision that is already taken. So that is problematic. Yes, and uh, Ahmed Madur, uh, Praveen Gordon in May 2020 